All right, let's try this again. Hey, it's Tom for Inspiration Metalworks. Um, well, at least nobody was watching it when I messed up on the audio there. Hey, uh, so totally unplanned, but I thought I'd bring you guys along on it. It's a beautiful day today here in North Carolina. Um, I've been out with my dad most of the day, checking out stuff at the uh, Dixie Classic. I saw my, my buddy Walt there. He had some stuff up uh, for sale, uh, some cool stuff there. But it's time to get back to work. Got the doors open. And the other day when I was cutting on the plasma cam, I heard a repetitive clunk, clunk, clunk sound as the axis was traversing. And when I looked at it, I could see on one of the teeth, um, or at least there was a repetitive mark on the, the rail, the teeth on the rail, that indicated that something was hitting it, right? Uh, in order to do that, uh, to figure out what's going on, I need to pull the gantry apart a little bit. I suspect there's just something stuck in the gear. Uh, I just need some cleaning. But it needs some cleaning. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I've been really, really slack on this. I've been so busy just working on stuff that, um, unlike uh, Mr. Fenner, Keith's great about keeping his machine spotless. Um, mine is not. In fact, mine is the exact opposite. It's really, really dirty. So I'm going to um, do a little cleanup and do some inspection on it and figure out what's going on. So I thought, hey, why not? Uh, I haven't done a live stream in a while. I hooked up a couple of cameras. Um, I'll show you what the other view is going to look like. Uh, we'll switch views real quick. That's the other view. You should be able to see what's going on. Um, it's a little washed out because it's just a bright sunny day out there. But um, yeah, so that's the plan right now. Uh, again, like I said, this was totally unscheduled, unplanned. We'll just kind of check it out and see how things are going. Um, but uh, stick with me if you got any questions. I will, I'm gonna be way over, you know, where I saw you, over there. Uh, I'll try and keep an eye on what's happening on the screen here, if there's any, any chat happening, stuff like that. Um, I might, there's a computer over there. I might actually fire up the other computer so I can at least have the chat open on the other uh, computer and uh, be able to respond to chat a little better. But uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing, still waiting. My wife's going to get some cleaner for me, but I cut up some old t-shirts. We've got some stuff to, uh, to use for, for that. Um, these shirts had seen better days. So, you know, uh, we're going to start and just do some basic maintenance clean up. I'll show you a little bit about what it takes to, to do this. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't done any maintenance on this machine in a couple of years. So, um, other than maybe wiping it down here and there. Uh, so it's, it's overdue. Um, there's some bearings that I typically would check and um, I probably need to order some more bearings. Uh, I'll do all the inspection on that. The big thing right now though is I'm seeing that mark on the on the gear itself and I want to make sure that those teeth aren't getting messed up. It's not a, a bigger uh, issue. So if I do have to order a new gear or something like that, uh, a new track or something, um, we need to do the inspection. So let's go ahead. Um, we'll switch camera views again and I'll head over there and we'll get started. All right. Ought to be interesting today. And I am going to, um, I will fire up this other computer here. So I can at least respond to chat if anything does come up. Looks like, yeah, you can see me. It's not great. Um, I don't have as many cameras and setups around here as I'd like to. Um, so it's a little far away. Most of those USB extenders and stuff that I would use like the Summer Bash um, are in use at this point. So I actually need to start getting equipment together for the Summer Bash. Um, let's start by doing a couple of things here. Get my safety squints on here so nobody complains about that. And we'll just index the machine. I've got the plasma cutter itself is unplugged. All right, um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this or not from where I'm at, but I'm going to uh, I'll do a couple of things. First thing, I suppose, is I better get that chat window up. 
Otherwise, y'all are going to be wondering what the heck is going on. Let's see. Let's take a second. Hopefully this isn't going to be throwing off our uh, bandwidth too much. It's the only thing out here that's kind of an issue for me is that bandwidth is a uh, it's at a premium. So I'll probably at least hide some of the view. And we'll get started. Oh, there's the chat. Pop out chat. We will stop this. Sorry, it's not much to look at right now, is it? All right. Hey guys, hey Duncan. Rivers Company. Oh, I know you too. Oh, excellent. Good to see you guys. Looks like there's a few more people on actually, which is cool. Um, let's see, I don't know how the video is from here. I might see if I can get a, a bit closer shot for you. Again, I gotta figure out if I can grab one of those, um, one of those extenders. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Um, when I'm moving, what I'm talking about, you should be able to see this okay. When I move the gantry in the X direction. Sounds really, really bad. And what I'm seeing is every, let's do some counting. Every one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Every 18 teeth, I'm seeing a wear mark and it's nice and bright and shiny. And so to me, it's a good indication that there is something wrong. Um, now, when I look at that, it's dirty. Um, I'll need to, <laughs> I'm gonna need to mute things a little bit later. Um, but uh, let me get the air compressor and some other stuff going here. It's the fun part about the wireless mic. I can at least keep you with me as I'm wandering about. All right. All right, got an airline. So the first thing I'll do is just kind of blow all this out, right? Make sure that everything through here is as clean as we can get it. Now, to give you an idea of how dirty this is, that's how dirty it is, right? I just wiped my finger on it. It's pretty, pretty nasty. There's a lot of fine particle, uh, particles that are released in the air when we do this kind of cutting. Let me mute this for you, sorry. All right, sorry about that. Dawned on me that that was gonna be really loud. All right, so that was kind of my, my first step was just to, just to get some of that blown out of there so if there is something in there it'll uh, at least help clean things up a little bit uh, let's see thought i had a well we'll use this flashlight i also want to just kind of see if i can get an eye an idea of what's happening if um if we do the maintenance like i'm expecting we're gonna end up doing i'm gonna end up pulling this head off of here so that I can get to the gears that are inside of there. So what I'm looking at now is I want to actually look. Oof. So the problem might even be the tension on the, yeah, it might be the tension on the, uh, rack. See how that's going back and forth? It's not supposed to do that. This is supposed to move with it. So 
this could be the problem as well. All right. Well, like I said, it needs some maintenance. Okay. Sorry, old blackboard shirt. So how are things going? Let's look in the chat. Beautiful sunny day in the south. Absolutely for a change. Yeah, it's been. Uh, actually, I don't, you guys can't see it's washed out. That's uh, my backyard. Actually, looks more like a pond right now than uh, than a yard. Part of the reason why it's so washed out right now, it's not just the sun. It's the fact that that's all wet. Um, it's just water. We have had so much rain that um, anytime we get any rain now, everything immediately floods. And this is months and months of this kind of rain. Yeah, this is definitely part of the issue. So what this is, this tensioner is what holds the the whole gantry it like a clamping mechanism right and if this part is going back and forth the springs are wearing against the bottom for some reason they're rubbing against this bottom so yeah it's supposed to be riding on a roller not uh oh wow that's that's bad that's filthy yeah this is all part of being a little overdue on my maintenance. But yeah, so if this part's not riding properly there, which it's not, this whole bearing, so there's a bearing right here. This bearing is supposed to be riding down here, and it's way up on top here. Okay, so there are several things wrong right now. We get a screwdriver. And again, folks, I mean, this is nothing to knock plasma cam. I mean, this, this thing has been in use, you know, regular use for, I don't know, six, seven years now. I don't remember how long I've had this thing. It's been a while. So um, the only thing is that I've ever had to replace. There was early on, I had some problems with my controller. Uh, this cable was, uh, got pinched at some point. Um, plasma cam was great, replaced everything. Most times it was even under warranty. How am I gonna do this? Hmm. Let's look at this. This is the fun part. popped up like that. I wonder, I think the idea here is we'll take the springs off. Everything will drop down, relax so I can drop it back down, get it in place. I think while I'm doing that, I will clean that bearing a little bit. Because it looks like, yeah, I need some needle nose. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Good times. Um, hmm. I seem to have misplaced my needle nose pliers. Ah. No, they're just all on the other bench. All right. side down. Fun part is doing this without having it just shoot everywhere. Sorry. My, oh, that one fell. But it didn't go anywhere. Sorry to have my back to the camera like that. But All right. So this, this part here. Let's clean this up a little bit. Um, so you can see what's been happening based on the, the cleanliness or dirt mark, 
uh, basically this has the bearing hasn't been riding in the right place because it the whole thing shifted up and so we've got actually this bearing has seized so there's our problem we have identified the problem we're having all right um, so that is a little cam cam style bearing um, so it's one of the tensioners that you use. So this same bearing is used here. There's uh, two that it rides on over here. It's used inside here. This bearing is a very common bearing on the plasma cam system. What I don't have is an extra, which is a problem. Because um, I have a bunch of stuff to get cut. And this means my system is completely down right now. Oh, shame on me for not thinking ahead. Um, the last time I had to replace one of these bearings was 2015, 16, yeah, 15. It's almost, four, it was about four years ago. In fact, it was this bearing. So I got four years out of this bearing, which is good. Um, Yeah, I don't know if it's if it's just completely jammed up. If I give it a little, little love, a little oil, see what it does. If it loosens back up, I can actually twist it with my finger a little bit. So um, I know it's not completely uh, seized. Uh, so let's see. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, no, I'm off frame again. Once again, I'm wandering around looking for something that's right in front of my face. All right. So what I'm going to do, folks, is uh, I've got some carburetor cleaner. I'm going to try getting all the carbon and stuff that's built up out of it. Um, hopefully, it's not too too loud. I don't know what what it's like. If you guys can give me a little indication in the chat how the sound is on that and then uh, yeah see that already that freed the bearing up so I suspect it just yep yeah. oh wow yeah that's our, our issue so we get that cleaned out and then I'll I'll oil it bearings are shot I mean I need to re I need to replace the bearings there's no question about that but so what this is going to do is give me a little, it's going to give me a little bit of time to order it and get the part in. Yeah, so that's, that's all right. No, this isn't a sealed bearing, which is part of the problem. And the fact that I could shoot some carb cleaner in there and do that is both good and bad, right? Because that means any of that particulate's also getting in there. I might try and replace it with some sealed bearings if I can. I was hoping it was something simple. There's still, again, folks, let's remind ourselves that this is just one part of the issue. All right, so this would identify why it was tracking funny. This is not why the, uh, um, this is just WD. Uh, Actually, maybe I'll use white oil. Yeah, let's do some white oil. Um, so yeah, this isn't um, a solution to the other issue here, which is why you know, nice why that gear gear is uh, creating that issue. Now maybe it's creating it because it it hasn't been um, holding it tight and it's allowing it to skip. I don't know. All right. So we'll let that soak into there a little bit. Let it maybe work into the bearing a little bit. We'll keep, keep working. But we've already identified and corrected one part of the problem. So that's good. 
I'm going to take a quick break here and check the chat. See how many people are like freaking out on me. All right, I see a beautiful day. Picked up parts, bike refurb. Oh, cool. Hi, Lars. Any servo damage? No, um, that bearing is, um, that's just a follower bearing. So it was more just, um, it's a follower and tensioner, right? So without this back piece on, right? Now this whole thing can shift around. In fact, I can remove, once I take this bearing off, I can remove the entire, um, yeah, I think I've got to take it one step further, but I can remove that. Now what I am noticing, yeah, I can still feel the jerkiness. So, but this bearing is turning. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this apart. I'll take this bearing off, and then that'll let me pull the whole, um, the whole Z uh, carriage off here. It looks like most of these bearings are gonna to need to be replaced. So it may just be, I mean, we're seven years in. I've really only replaced a couple of bearings on this the whole time. All right, after seven years of, of use, uh, maybe it's time that I do a little maintenance on here and clean it up. But I'm not seeing any damage or anything uh, of that nature. It looks, it looks fine to me. Um, probably replace this belt while I'm at it. Uh, yeah. So the way this works, you got the servo. It's got a drive. Uh, so we've got a reduction here. This is, um, we've got uh, the gear here on a, uh, oh, what is that called? I have spindle stuck in my head, but I'm having one of those days. Right, so there's a secondary gear underneath. So we're using this as a, as a reduction gear. Um, the nice part about the way this is set up is if something does go horribly wrong like that, it would just slip. Um, it, you know, this belt would be the first thing that would really have a problem. So I'm actually surprised to see that there's any marking on here. But when I rub my finger on that mark, I can feel it's just enough to scratch the surface. So I really think I just got a chip or something that's kind of half welded itself to that, um, that lower gear. And um, it won't take much to, to correct it. I'm gonna take this part with me while I go figure out which, um, I think it's, eight millimeter and I think that hex is a uh, two millimeter, but I'll take it with me. I don't know if I wanna switch camera angles. It's not really gonna help much. I'll, I'll switch it, why not? All right, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be over this way now. Yeah, it's not gonna let you do that. I'll turn the whole monitor, how's that? We'll be over here trying to find the right uh, the right tool. So, <laughs> I've got stuff in too many places right now. That's part of the problem. We've been rearranging and getting the shop organized. Oh, hey, Ellie. Hey. My wife just got here with cleaning supplies. So what size is this? This is two and a half, so it must be a three. I wonder if it's one eighth, actually. Yeah, so uh, we've been, um, hi, sweetheart. I'm doing a live stream too, just in case, so you know. Thank you. You're welcome. You're like, all right, I'm done. Love you, bye. Cleaning supplies secured. You know what, that brake cleaner actually made this, uh, this part is powder coated and it actually has made it a little on the tacky side. Note to self and anyone else out there, don't do that. Um, probably should have taken the bearing apart and then um, and then tried to clean it. I was being lazy, I will admit it. Okay. So, where you, oh, let's switch camera angles while we do this. All right, we're using a 1 8 um, 
one eighth Allen and I grabbed, looks like 10 millimeter. Yeah, I know I'm breaking all these rules by using a mix of stuff, but oh well. That is what I'm doing. If you guys don't like it, come do the maintenance for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I know you guys are awesome, actually. If you're sitting, ooh, you know what? I'm not using a 10 millimeter. It just went right around it. All right, quick, I'm gonna check the chat. Who could do the uh, math and tell me what the right size is if I'm doing 10 millimeter? Uh, who would I see here? Oh, nice. Hey, Douglas. Zach, you're awesome. Probably had that cam follow on the shelf. Oh, I wish. Colin, this is awesome. We got a bunch of people. Yeah, so if it's not 10 millimeter, what size wrench do I need? Who's doing the math for me? Because I left the part over there and I don't have my reference with me now. We'll see who, uh, who wins that three eighths. Okay, Colin, you win. You know what I did? Adjustable, I cheated. But according to the handy dandy crescent wrench, yeah, look at that, three eighths. Colin wins. Colin, I think I'm gonna send you something, buddy. What do you want? Put it in chat. I'd love to actually send you a little something. Not because you won that, but just because, you know, frankly, I think you're pretty awesome. And I haven't seen you in too long. And I wish you were coming to the bash this summer. All right, I'm done. Oh, okay. Once again, I'm having to turn my back to you guys. All right, now here's what's about to happen. I don't know which one of you astute viewers was catching that, but this whole thing was about to just plummet off of here, right? So I'm gonna stick something underneath it to keep it from falling. We'll use the handy dandy fireball tool because in a square, because that's what I have sitting right here. All right. There we go. So those are um, nylock uh, nuts on there. All right. So the way this works is you throw every important part on the floor so that you lose it and then can't do what you need to do. Okay. Thankfully, this was it. So there is a, we'll take a look at, you've got the uh, faller, right? It's got a little adjuster here. And then a nylock nut to hold it in place. So we'll put this back to kind of half together so I don't lose it. Yeah, okay. And as you guys can see, it's definitely getting dirty. All right, I'm just gonna set this down. We'll pull this other spring off. So I've got both springs now sitting here on the side. This box, I'll give you guys some guesses on what's in this box. We'll do that later. Um, okay, before I dig any deeper on that, let's come over here, check this out. Uh, oh, yeah. That's why we can't use dual systems. Oh, I got a good point. Um, cool. Colin, I don't know if I still have your address. But yeah, um, I got some stickers and you know what? I got a set of magnets for you too. So um, yeah, by all means. I think you still have my email address. It's just uh, tom at inspirationmetalworks.com and uh, send it over. I'll get you, I'll send some stuff out. 
Uh, sorry guys. Let's see how oh, there's dust parts around too. Yeah. Um, sadly. Oh, you know what? Let's turn the power off at this point. <clears throat> this was still under power. So I should have done that earlier. I forgot I had turned it on. Okay. Let's take a look at a couple of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like I'm losing stuff because I'm kind of losing stuff. Hey, what was that uh, meme that was just going around about spend more time looking for the tool that you just had in your hand than uh, anything else? Okay, which one of you really astute viewers can tell me where the heck I put the nozzle for my airline, my air gun? Ah, there it is. Got it. Okay. I'm trying to limit how much of this I'm taking apart right now. Uh, I will clean everything really well. Um, yep, I was right about that gear. Uh, you know what, I'm going to mute this for a second so you don't get all the airline stuff. Okay, audio should be back on. What I want to do is, um, to the extent I can, um, move some of this this way up a little bit so I can work on it. And then I'll give you an idea. You guys can see a little bit better about the mechanism. And of course, like I said, I don't have the greatest of uh, video set up here. But we'll get there. All right. Everybody having fun so far? Of course, this kind of stuff always happens when you have a bunch of work to do. I've got a sign to get done for a local brewery. It's getting ready to open a new location. I've got parts to get cut for a suspension system for a 60, I want to say it's a 66 um, Chevy truck. We're converting to independent rear suspension. Yeah, this is filthy. I don't know how much you guys can see, but it's just filthy. Now the one thing that I was really concerned about I don't know if you guys can see it or not. This is that tooth. I can see the, the damage. Every time it goes around, I can see that spot that's causing it. So I'm just gonna take a little wire brush and clean that up. Um, I might see if I've got a little pick if that doesn't just come right out. Yeah, it didn't just come right out. So there's a little piece of metal that got wedged in there. I'm gonna grab a pick so I can pull that out clean that gear up and then we can get this cleaned up a little better and get it all buttoned back up okay a little pick nothing fancy just a little harbor freight deal wow that's in there good. I might actually have to take a file to that because, um, like a gear file, because I think what happened is a hot piece of metal, you know, dross got up in there and wedged itself in. And then as the machine was going back and forth, it, uh, Kind of stuck in there. I don't want to put too much pressure on this. I'm just trying to see if it'll clean up. 
Now, why is this important? Well, not just from a wear perspective. Like, this should always hit the exact same place every single time. Eventually, it'll wear itself in, and then it won't cause any more damage. Um, but it's going to cause the whole head to shift on me a little bit. And that's going to cause the cut to move, you know, 20, 30, 40 thousandths, 50 thousandths away. May not sound like an awful lot, but I try to keep really tight tolerances with this, and that can scrap my parts. So, yeah, um, probably need to get in there with a little gear file, um, or a, a gear file, but a, uh, I'll probably use a little um, thread file, like a thread chasing file. But I'll clean the rest of them for now. I think the big thing for me, though, is it's time to, uh, time to order some replacement parts for it. Just, you know, regular replacements and spares. The downside of these, uh, these bearings is they cost about $12 a piece. I mean, I think there's like 10 or 12 of them on here. I mean, there's, I'm counting one, two, three, four, there's five. Um, there's the sixth one on there. There's six that I can count off the top of my head here just real quick that are just on the, the Z axis uh, head, right? So, you know, that's a hundred bucks right there. Yeah, those all need to be replaced. A little crunchy sounding. Again, they're just for, you know, followers. They're not terribly, um, oh, they're not you know, terribly critical as far as, you know, just the function, but they are from a, you know, you want it to run smoothly. You want it to be as, you know, as clean as possible as far as your motion goes. Um, and if that's, you know, if that's all crunchy, what else is going to happen? You know, it, then you end up with, with one that goes like this and the whole thing goes crazy on you, right? So, yeah, I know I'm overdue on this, on doing the cleaning, but it's also not the end of the world. Okay, I am just using some real basic, uh, just so you know, it's just glass cleaner. There's nothing, nothing fancy to it. It's mostly just that. Now I'm trying to be careful of the um, of any of the electronics. I don't want it. I don't want this to get into the into the electronics. And you can see how how much that's doing just just from doing some basic cleaning, just spraying some some cleaner on it and most of this gets dirty because it never sees the light of day. It just stays underneath and you don't see it. You can't get to it to clean it. But this is the, I don't want to call it the, the dark secret of plasma cutting, but it's definitely one of the more difficult aspects of what I do is that the stuff's just dirty. Um, I do have a water table on here. What I don't have is water to the shop. Um, I've run a hose out this way before. It is helpful. There's a few things though that when I used the water table, I didn't like. Um, one of which was it was constantly shorting out the um, the uh, sent the height sensing, right? Because that's using really it's just using a little. Um, there we go. It's just using a little electrode that. Um, so you guys aren't going to be able to see it, but basically to the torch, there's a little wire that runs to it, and it um, it just keeps track of the voltage. Um, that's going through it and the farther the gap is the higher your voltage goes to bridge that gap and so it can keep a steady um, a steady height for you well if water gets up there it shorts it out it thinks it's at zero or thinks it's you know it's hit the the part and then it stops um, so 
on the you know annoying scale really high um, there are ways around it I suppose and that's what I've got to figure out next because I do need to get the uh, water table running again what I've been doing right now in the meantime until I get the water table working in a reasonable manner is I basically open up all the doors. I've got a big fan. It just blows everything out into the outside. Keeps me from getting a bunch of stuff in the shop. Keeps me from getting a bunch of stuff on those really expensive CNC machines I have over basically right there, right? Um, you know, when you're, when you're looking at the view when I'm at my desk, what you're seeing is the side view of the of the uh, vertical machining center. That's the brother that you're seeing there in the background. Okay, this is not the best cleaning job in the world. I can tell you that. But it's getting the big stuff knocked off it. This is probably the first time I've done this level of cleaning to it. Like it is the first time I've taken it off like this to clean it. Normally I would just wipe it down while it's on the, on the gantry itself. Um, and again, being very careful to keep the cleaner away from the electronics. All right, let's look at the chat. Yes, we're gonna back hopefully. Okay, wow. Maintenance instructions from the eighty second, yeah. <laughs> Lockout tag, yeah, yeah, that would be good. Come on now. Let's run the eighty second. Air draft like it. You know what? So um I talked to Keith about that before. So I really like what he's got. So he's got a combination of a downdraft and the water table. So when I made this water table, um, it's basically just a big bucket, right? There's nothing fancy about it. Um, the, uh, what Keith did on his is he created these, um, he welded like V channels in it so that as the spray goes in, it wants to direct it to certain places. What happens, um, and the other part with his is he did that much lower. So his is a really deep uh, table. Um, what happens, especially on mine, is, I don't know if you guys can see, we've got these grids, right? So the grid has little points on it, the material rests on the point, minimizing contact. So as you're cutting, excuse me, you're not cutting into the slats, um, right? What happens though, especially as the water level gets high, um, you want that water level to be within, you know, an inch of the uh, material or a couple inches of the material. What happens is now you've got this six inch square box that captures, it's full of water, right? You've got 90 PSI air coming through and actually you got this tiny stream cutting through. So it's, you know, the speed of it is really accelerated and it just splashes all over the place because it's got no place else to go. It's basically getting trapped in the slats. Um, so, yeah, it splashes all over the place. Um, I've seen, I think the solution here is actually uh, to look at how the, um, how the cap is in place. Like I might need to switch things around a little bit, flip it over so that, um, or bend the tab a little bit so that, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Paul Brinegar stuff. He's a ZT fab. Um, he does some amazing work. Paul's plasma cutter, um, he's got a little cup thing, a little shield on it so that it, um, it keeps everything self-contained below it, right? Uh, the nice part about that is it could keep all the water below it. If that electrode piece is above it, we're not gonna get the water coming up and shorting it. I think that's the ultimate solution for me. Once I get to that, then the water table goes back into full action um, actually, there's two things to do. This water table has a drain only, nothing else. I need to add a secondary input, 
and a pond pump, right? Because what I need to be able to do is be able to fill it up, use the stuff, let it drain back down into a container so I can get to the little parts that I just cut and then put it back up again um, when I'm using it. The other reason not to leave the water in the table is then all that moisture gets in the air and it gets on all the machines and it wants to rust everything. So I'm, that's, that's the kind of stuff that I'm, I'm thinking about for this. Um, sorry, babbling a little bit, but that's just kind of where things are right now. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the basics of it. Um, the other thing is that I was hoping my daughter would come over and help do is just, you know, just some j basic cleaning. You guys, oh, well, you might be able to hear the dog in the background. It's a beautiful day. Everybody is just wanting to be outside playing. So they are on the trampoline and having a good time. And I can't say that I blame them, you know? Um, but Nika does a great job with this kind of stuff. She just loves, she loves cleaning. Um, she will just, you give her a task like this and then you walk away and come back and everything is just glowing and spotless and, um, pretty amazing actually. Oh, all right. Dogs freaking out as they're horse playing a little bit out there. So, what do you guys think? Is this um, is this kind of stuff you expected to see on plasma cutter? We'll give that a second, and then I'll check the the chat. So I think most people, when they're watching the videos, with me or Keith or anybody, you know, they, we do tend to just show the exciting stuff. <laughs> this is decidedly not exciting, you know? Um, typically wouldn't torture anybody with this, except for my daughter, right? Because she likes to do it. All right, let the computer wake up and then I'll look at all your fun comments about plasma cam maintenance. Yeah, see this is the kind of thing, so Keith does this, and when I say Keith, we're talking about Keith Fenner. He does this every, every time he uses his machine, which is the right way to do it, frankly. You know, if you do a little bit of maintenance, every time you use it, you don't have to do this kind of crazy ass maintenance. <sighs> okay. So, what's everybody saying so far? Mm -hmm. Routine maintenance schedule. Oh, that's a good question. I'll have to look at it. Um, that one, uh, yeah, I'll definitely have to look. The, you know, one of the things that I will say about Plasma Cam is they have a very good manual that comes with this. It is a video manual, right? Um, it's meant to be played on your computer and it takes you through all the calibration pieces and uh, everything that you need to do to get up and running. Uh, what I don't know, honestly, I've never looked at is if they have a maintenance schedule. So how bad is that? Here's what I'm seeing so far. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. You might be able to see it on this back side of the gantry. Okay, yeah, you can see it. The, uh, after seven years of that bearing going back and forth, the powder coat on the gantry, that's that black line, uh, is wearing thin. Um, so that, again, is indicative not just of where, but it's probably, if I had to guess, a good part of that is because it gets dirty with that really fine particulate, and then I don't clean it, and so that, that little particulate that's in there, it does a number to the 
uh, to the powder coat. And that starts to expose it. Now, what Plasma Cam recommends is that you can take some 220 grit sandpaper or a very fine um, steel wool, and you can go over all that stuff and get it nice and smooth. They don't say that you need to recoat it, right? What you're, what you're shooting for is smooth. Um, you don't want anything inducing any wiggle. I'm having the same problem up front where those followers uh, have rubbed against the uh, it's rubbed against the uh, powder coat. So, yep. But it's not bad. Now, the nice thing is, is if I wanted to, I could buy replacement parts for every one of these pieces, right? Um, Plasma Cam makes it really easy to do. You go on their website. Their website is pretty restricted to who can get into it. There's an owner's forum, right? And if you're an owner and you can prove your, your ownership and you, you get registered and everything, um, you, you kind of get the keys to the castle on some of this stuff. I can buy every piece, right? I could put together an entirely new uh, setup if I wanted to. Um, you know, the thing that they're most restrictive about is the controller. It's this controller right here. Because that is how, that controller is what runs everything. Without it, so between that and I guess the software that you install, um, you can't really do anything. Um, but overall, I've been really happy. The system itself generally just works. Um, I don't have problems with with it. It is by far my most profitable machine I have in the shop, seeing as um, it's been paid for for several years. But um, you know, as far as level of effort to get up to speed on how to run it, how to use it, um, I invested in a couple of things that made that a whole lot easier up front. Uh, one of those is the automatic height control. So, uh, yeah, with that installed, it's pretty easy. Hey, <laughs> can you help? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, I am, hey, I'm live streaming. So if you want to say hi, camera's right there, wave. Here you go. Cleaner, um, remember, don't spray it on the electronics. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you can spray some on the rag and wipe stuff down. Um, but uh, yeah, keep it off the electronics. Just uh, any of those rags are, are fair game. Um, I've been working on the, the gantry because that's the part that is giving me some fits right now. But I think it's actually gonna be okay. I've gotta order some new parts for it though. These bearings, Nika, um, they're all starting to, to wear out. I mean, they're the original bearings, so it's not bad. But we do have the live stream on. If there's a, the chat is going there, Nika. I don't know if you can see it. Um, so if you wanna, you can kind of keep an eye on things there too. The big thing that I'm trying to make sure is getting clean is any of the moving, the moving parts, and then any place that might start to get some buildup. So for you, clean everything, right? Wipe it down. Do what you gotta do. You know, one thing, that, Nika, that we might do, I might pull the torch off, clean everything really good in there, but then um, I felt like the torch hasn't been completely square to the, um, to the table. So you might, well, no, there's nothing wrong with the measurements. Um, what I'm seeing is when it goes in certain directions, I see a little bit more of an angle versus a straight line. Um, so, oh, there you go. There's a, there's a tip for you guys. If your cuts, right? So having the square or having the torch, you know, perpendicular to the 
face is really important, right? Because what happens is, is you get a weird draft angle. So if my torque isn't perfectly straight, let's say it's this way a little bit. When I'm cutting this direction, let's say this is the Y direction, the angle is going to be more like this. It would look just fine cutting an X, right? It'd be perfectly straight up and down. But then back in Y, you'd have this angle this way. So if you see your part is cut this way a little bit, right, then you know, you're left to right. If you see it's um, on the X axis, you've got um, an angle, then it's, uh, then it's front to back, it's a little off. Um, plasma will always have a little bit of a draft because the, the cutter is a teardrop, right? And so what you're trying to do is you have your torch height set so that you've got the flattest part of the teardrop um, doing the cutting. Uh, so it'll always have a little bit of a draft angle, but it shouldn't be excessive. It should just be a little, a little bit of an angle. Um, typically, your uh, angle is going out just a little bit, and it should be the same on all four uh, sides. So there you go. It's not a Haas tip of the day. It's your plasma cam tip of the day. Oh, I'm getting loopy. How you doing, kid? All right, let's see. How are things going here? Future machine. Yeah, Greg, look who shows up. When you're <laughs> no, there's plenty that you can keep doing. You're good. Yes, I'm done cleaning. No, not really. There's plenty. There's plenty to do. Um, yeah, just keep at it. Uh, you know, I just, a cheap glass cleaner is plenty. Uh, a better one would be like Simple Green or, a, you know, like a degreaser. Um, yeah, Simple Green works really well on it. I just didn't want to spend the money on it. To, most of the cleaning that needed to happen is just getting the dust off of it. We weren't doing like deep cleaning. Simple Green will actually get any of the stain, you know, a lot of the staining off of it. So, yeah. All right, where are we here? We got this, we got this. We still haven't gotten that gear cleaned fully. There's that. Let me see if I can get a file to get in there. How many people are watching? Let's take a look. 14 people, wow. All right. Thank you guys. It is greatly appreciated, especially since this was not a planned occasion. Ooh, this is going to be interesting because my files that I would typically use for that would require me to take the gear off of the arbor. There, that's the word I was going for, arbor. Ah, here we go. I got a smaller one. Wow. See, I knew it'd come to me eventually. So, little triangle um, file. Again, Cheap little Harbor Freight stuff, or this might be Home Depot or something like that. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. The, uh, the idea though is I may have to switch to a, a thinner, like this is, um, this is for what I would use, it, use for uh, teeth, but I don't know if this will fit in there. If it won't, then I'll go to a flat uh, style file and see if I can get that garbage out of there. Oh yeah, there's just enough room. Of course, this is um, the material that got stuck up there because it was molten. It was really, really hard. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not that. Thank you for offering, though, Nika. Um, I can't get into it. It's too wide. I need to get a different file. So I've got a, a half round file that should fit in there a little better. How is the trampoline? The dog was going crazy. What's that? When mom's on the trampoline? Well, I think what she doesn't like is she doesn't like horseplay just in general. 
this gear is pressed on here too. I could take the whole thing apart. I just don't want to. The bearings feel fine. It's just that one spot. I'm, I'm being very careful when I'm doing this. I'm watching. Um, oh, it's off. Um, we could unplug it completely if you're concerned. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah, it welded itself to the the gear. I don't know how it did that. Well, it was molten, right? So it was it was melted and it got into the gear as it was moving. And so um, do that and then I need to do a test real quick, if you don't mind. I pretty much got the gantry clean. You know the that part of it's pretty well done. Can you um, can you move it back to me for a second? Yeah. I just want to um, just want to get a feel for how this is moving along. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can you can do that. I think we're in good shape. Hey Nika, I think I think we can probably reassemble this. Um, let me dry off the the gear though. Sorry guys, I'm gonna mute you for a second. All right, that's done. <sighs> yeah, this part gets a little, uh, a little fun to do. Hmm. Yeah, can you um see if there's anything on the screen, please? Uh, look at the web. No, that's fine. Look at the change to Chrome. Because what we're looking for is the web browser. Yeah, the right side. That. That's the chat window. Okay. Anything you can read to me if you want. The last thing I saw was Future Machinist. Oh, who is it? What is it? Oh, TJ's welding. Dude, you're at Disney? It's awesome. You escaped the uh, the cold for a little while, huh? Good for you. Hmm? Good. Oh, Robert Howard, okay. Yeah, the water tables. I said, I gotta get the water table part worked out. You've had yours since 09, that's awesome. Yeah, we didn't get ours until 2012. Is that right, Nika? Do you remember? It was after we had moved back down to North Carolina mm -hmm. from Virginia, so. That's about four or five years. Well, you were, yeah, we moved in 2010 and it was, was it the following year, 2011? Has it been eight years already? I don't remember. 
Either way, it's, it's been a while. So, you know, the fact that this is really the, the first major maintenance I've had to do to it. Springs have a little bit of rust on them. They're not bad. Actually, it might not be rust. It might just be like, yeah, it's not rust. It's just buildup. It's got the um, buildup on it of the, the dust from the cutting. So, yeah, it's not even, I almost lost it. <laughs> I should set up a pool for how long it's gonna take me to do something like that. What does it say? A great audio? Not so great. I mean, look. Don't, yeah, hey, get some sleep, buddy. Oh, address it. You said adjust it. No, I said address it. Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, great audio, yeah. So, um, okay, I can do that. Uh, the audio, a couple of things. So, first thing is I've got a wireless mic on. So up under the shirt and everything. Uh, this is a, it's a, by the road. So it's the road link um, setup. So there's, uh, I've got that going. Um, that goes back to the computer. Into the computer, I have a USB to um, eighth inch line adapter. So it's just basically a USB audio device that lets me go in uh, from there. The big thing on it, is the the microphone itself right so having having that wireless microphone the camera we're on right now is a uh, 4k uh, camera it's the logitech brio uh, i'm actually only doing uh, 1080p i'm not doing 4k um, simply because like especially i was talking about earlier bandwidth is a premium out here so um, not to the house i've got great bandwidth i could fully support a 4k stream well compressed 4k right um, I can support a good stream. It's that I'm on a point-to-point, -point, like a mesh network to get out here. The house is 300 some feet away, right? And so I'm using a, you know, a mesh network to get anything out here. So uh, I'm lucky to get five megabit up from, from where I'm at right now. Um, really for a decent stream, um, you wanna have somewhere in the two and a half to three megabits. So I should be okay for my streaming but it does get a little funky sometimes. I often reset my router, uh, but right before I do stuff like this. I didn't today, so thankfully everything's working well. Um, the weather can affect things. Um, that's one that probably is uh, more annoying than I care to admit. But uh, yeah, so that's the, the microphone. Um, I, what I might do is I might do a, uh, I'll do a video about my setup that I use because I think it's probably worth doing. Um, awesome. That's the second time I have dropped, dropped that part. Um, it is the nut for this um, bearing. All right. Get this on. How are things going for you, kiddo? I almost just felt. Oh, on camera too. That'd be awesome. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. Nothing like being in that preteen time. All right. I'll put the tensioner on, and then we'll be ready for this part. So, who thinks I'm going to kill myself while I put the tensioner on? <laughs> Nick is just like, uh, should I run? Yes, run, run away. 
Well, why can't I get this on? What am I doing wrong here? Hey, Nika, you know what's awesome? What? When you're on camera, you're know, live stream, and, and you can't figure out what to do. <laughs> okay, y'all saw me take it off, right? <laughs> So what's going on with this? So how does it work? All right. Oh, I have an idea. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. It'd be awesome if you like nail it first try. Yeah. All right, folks, let's take some bets. Who's gonna get this on there, Nika or me? Don't force it. Yeah, you're like, ah, I'm going to go back to what I was doing. Yeah, or neither of us. What the heck? So it's really funny because it didn't take much to come off. You think maybe you could like very slightly bend the middle? I don't want to very slightly bend the middle. <laughs> I like your idea, but... Um, this is a, I mean, it's a retention system, right? So it's meant to like clip in and keep things from falling out, but that's really not going to line up. There are directions in that video <gasps> library. Yes, you got it. That's the same as going from above. Oh, it's, it's not from above. I remember this being a real pain when I did it the first time, too. This is actually not the first time I've taken this off. The second time. But... Why would it not... Oh, okay. Good. Thank you, guys. Oh my goodness. Uh, probably not. That's more melted on. Most of what's on there is like sprayed on melted metal. Um, yeah, this is, this is really neat. Sanding stuff. What is she sanding? Well, um, she's been doing it for the preschool, so she got... Oh, she for got, the preschool, she, okay. She's making, like, robots or whatever, so she got a bunch of hey, go, scrap wood. Hey, go answer questions, okay. if you don't mind. I have nothing new. Nothing new? Well, what, did, what was the last thing? Just that it was... Yeah. People want to see the video on... Okay, folks. I know that the camera's far away, but y'all saw me do this, and... And one guy has a plasma cam, so what am I doing wrong, guys? What am I doing? Help. Help. Why? No, that's the airline. No, I'm positive that's hers. No, that's the refrigerator for the air. No, no, no I, I can hear that too, but I can also hear the sound. You do have much better hearing than I do at this point, so it's quite possible. Okay, Nika. What's the deal? Did you figure this out yet? So what is it? What is it? Okay. To do again? This is supposed to ride in here, and then there's a spring. Like this goes here, and this goes here, right? And these springs attach the two sides, and that's what clamps it together on what the. If you put the bottom part there first, and one side, and then move that. Move what? I mean, that doesn't move. Oh, th no, this. It doesn't move. Doesn't? Well, it moves, but this is one solid piece. Oh. It's not like it's going to bend. Whoa, hey, that's moving very nicely now. Is it a good thing? I think it's a good thing for moving, not a good thing for trying to get this thing on. Aha. Uh -huh. I think I know what the problem is. Guys, remember when I said that the um, uh, the cleaner 
the carb cleaner was affecting the um, the powder coat. I think it actually swelled up a little bit, and it's affecting the tolerance. Because so I just saw how close we are to getting it on. Wait, is that paint can stop you from going on? It kind of looks like it, yeah. Hey, hand it in a little file. Let's just double check that it's not something really silly. Okay. What would the really silly thing be? No, we've been fighting it all this time oh because of the paint. Because there's nothing really exciting to see. It is on, okay. Right. Hmm? Is there something? Did I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you get the gear file back to position or is that still an issue? I did get the gear file back. Um, that seems to be okay at this point. Um, No, that's definitely not the problem. Nika, I'm going insane. Maybe it fits better this way. Oh, that's what I got. <gasps> yep. Got it. We were doing it backwards. It was backwards. No, it wasn't backwards. Literally, the way this is cut, you had to put this side on first, then this side. We've been putting this side on. And this one wouldn't go on. Okay, so for the gears to engage, this needs to be up a little bit. This is what the springs are going to do. That was annoying. Craig, thank you for uh, washing, buddy. I really appreciate you being here. I should have asked if he was going to make it to the, the bash this year, the summer bash. Hey, go find, go find that uh, spring. Oh, thank God, it's like right here. I thought it just like launched into the yard. <laughs> I really just thought that launched into the yard. I was just like, oh God. What if it did? Hey, do me a favor. Yeah. I want you on this, or go, go, where's your glasses? Go find your safety glasses, please. It seems necessary, indeed. Yeah, there's a whole stack of them. Um, there's some on the, there's some on the prep table. There's Anika. There should be some on the prep table. Look on my desk, or the prep table, or the. Um, did you find it? Okay, good. I was like, we. That's one thing. There's no shortage of in here. What are you doing? Look, it's a pretty heavy duty spring, and I'm. No, I'm trying to put it on, oh, you're to turn it off. and basically, it's um, shooting out, <laughs> or well, not really shooting out, but I lose my grip on it. Like, yeah. Be careful so it doesn't actually shoot out into the yard. Right. Guess what, folks? It's back together, and. Ooh, um, I have considered it, yeah. I really have. So, here's where we're at. Power's back on. Let's switch over here. We'll initialize it. I don't know if you guys can hear the difference. It is significantly quieter, but that gear is still not fully right. It's good enough for right now. We're gonna order a replacement, is what we're gonna end up doing. Okay. Oh, 
I, no, it's not closed. I just I had to bring up the uh, the plasma cam interface to do that test. So chat's still right here. Um, Lars, the uh, the five by ten. So there's a couple of things that I've I've looked at. Um, I really like this uh, this setup. I, I like the system. Um, I have a couple of limitations on, on what I do. Uh, the first, hi, please be careful. Okay. Thank you. Um, the first big limitation that I have is just space, right? Uh, the this I've got 1,500 square feet for the whole shop, which is an amazing amount of space, but it's broken up into two sides. And so... Should we smash a wall? I'd love to, actually. Um, but that's not for <laughs> right now. So, yeah, right now, I've got... On this side of it, it was built... Like, it's a garage, right? So you can see the... This is, the, I mean, it's a two-post lift, right? So I've basically got one bay that I have dedicated to cutting and welding, right? So everything on this side over here, it's all just for cutting and welding. Um, I need more space, to be honest. Um, my welding table is tiny compared to what I used to have, which is, you know, twice the size, really. Didn't you have, like, two and then you, like, split them together? No. Do the same thing? Um, what, a lot of times what I used to do is I would take this and slide it up to the plasma cam. I had smaller wheels That's on it. That's why it looked so big. Yeah. I had smaller wheels on it, so I'd ride it up right to the plasma cam. It, I built this to be the exact same height as the plasma cam. So it would give me a little bit more um, flexibility to take longer sheets and move it. Um, I'm also uh, a disabled veteran. Um, I've got six titanium screws in my spine, uh, so I'm limited a little bit by how much I can move, how much I can lift and move things around. Um, you know, Craig was joking around about my, uh, you know, learning my maintenance from the 82nd, right? So I was talking about the 82nd Airborne Division, um, which is the unit I used to be in once upon a time. Um, so I've thought about doing like a gantry system, things like that, where I could move larger sheets of material in. Um, right now, the four by four is a sweet spot for me. Um, I typically don't cut anything, well, I can't cut anything over half inch. And when I do, I get smaller pieces. Um, these are 3 16th right now. That's the biggest I can move by myself, and that's really hurting myself, to be honest. Um, yeah, you do help sometimes. Yep. Uh, most times what I'm cutting is uh, I cut a lot of quarter inch, I cut a lot of 3 16 um, and I cut a lot of 14 gauge. Like my sign making is typically 14 gauge uh, steel. Um, I got some eighth inch stainless sitting outside right now waiting to get brought in so I can do these signs. Um, but uh, I'd love to be able to do the longer piece, right? So you figure if we did the five by 10, you'd have to do a little bit wider here, which as we get some of this cleared out on this side, we can shift over a little bit. We've got the room for that. I could double my, my length here you know, pretty easily and fit a full size sheet. But in all honesty, I think if I make an upgrade to something that size, um, I'm probably going to upgrade to something that also includes the cleaning system, meaning something for the airflow, something for you know water or whatever. Um, I've looked at Shop Saber. I've looked at you know looked at some other systems that are out there. Um, I think uh, you know Gary uh, Ramsey is doing work with uh, I think it's True Cut maybe, True Cut CNC. Um, his table seems you know, great. I love my plasma cam. Um, I like the company. Um, I've worked with a couple of people out there over the years. They've been good to me. Um, no, not sponsored. Uh, they're just good people, right? Um, so frankly, I'd like to stay within the plasma cam family if I can, um, but if I get to a point where I'm going to upgrade like that, I, you know, there's other things that I have to take into account. And so I don't know. Long-winded answer to say I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's a good, uh, good question, though. Thank you. Uh, Nika, you've also got chat going over at the computer there, too, right? Um, anything new? You may have to scroll. 
Nothing new? Okay. Excellent. All right. Oh, cool. You are quite welcome. I'm, uh, I, t I tend to, to just be an open book. Uh, you know, I try to, I try to do that and just kind of, um, try to help other people. Like I said, I don't, I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, over the years I've, I've talked to different folks. I mean, I've talked to plasma cam about it and, and they, they don't really sponsor people. Um, they might have a couple of people. I know at one point Keith uh, Fenner was doing something with them, but you know he's you know, thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and I'm I'm creeping up on four thousand. So you know I'm not in that category that you know people have you know stuff like that. But even if I did, um, I won't compromise my integrity uh, for a dollar. Um, just not who I am. I'm, I'm always going to tell you the truth about what's going on, about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. So that's just how I do it. <clears throat> right, kiddo? <laughs> You're like, yeah, sorry. All right. I think we're, uh, we're good. I think we're going to wrap this one up. Hmm? Yeah, you can take them off. Um, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. It's been, hey, I'm going to sit there. I'm going to switch, switch cameras real quick. Thanks. Oh, hey, you know what? That angle is really off. Sorry, guys. Yeah. All right. Okay, yeah, let's wrap it up. Um, I hope this was helpful for, uh, for everybody. Um, for those of you who are interested in the plasma cam systems or things like that, you got some insight into how it works. <laughs> are you seriously doing that? That's hilarious. Okay, anyways, um, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you uh, for those of you who are subscribed. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for supporting her wherever she went. And uh, I will, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.